He's a former NFL football player. He's the star of the reality show A&E's Flip This House. Here's Than Merrill's seven tips to real estate success. I really want to focus on is business growth. And that's really what we're going to talk about. We're going to focus on, I'm going to give you an outlook of the different areas of the business and how we look at it, how we market for sellers. You know, I'm big into marketing for sellers and buyers. I think that's the one area I can really help you and give you a different perspective. Change the way you think about marketing because marketing is the key to the business. What's the key to the business? I just want to make that clear. It is the key to the business. And so that's what I wanted to start off with. What does it take to be a great investor? Well, to start, when you're new, it takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. Does it not? I'll give you an idea. This is what my office looks like. I, I only think, Pat, you've been to my office. You're the only one. So Pat, if you, Pat comes into my war room where we look at all the deals, this is why we're successful. I hate everything that you do. Are you wasting time? Are you cleaning your house on Sundays? Who's cleaning their house on Sundays? Be honest with me. Right? Waste of time. You can have someone at $8 an hour do that. Now all of a sudden you have three, four additional hours a week to produce income. Because our whole life we can spend doing these monotonous things, but you have to realize you've got to use your time, and your time is very, very valuable. It's because we had knowledge, we were working, but we had no system. And then as soon as we started to shrink time and create systems, that's when we really created value. Well, what does systems do? Well, here's the problem with most businesses. Right? Anybody have a business that looks like this? Anybody? Come on, be honest with me. All right. Everybody's got a business like this. Put your hand up right now. Let me see. All right. So what you do is you market, right? Then the phone call comes in. Who answers the phone? You do. Okay, now you gotta, who's going to pull the comp and look at the deal? You. Okay, who's going to do this? We don't even know what it is, but I bet you're going to do it. <laughs> Who's going to go raise the money? Who's going to meet with the buyer? Who's going to, right? To take you out of the business, it dies. So what you do is you say, okay, th these are advanced concepts. And someone's saying, well, this doesn't apply to me. I haven't even got my first deal. I just got to figure out how to do that. What I want you to do is from that very first deal say, all right, how did this process work? What did I do? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? How can I create a system to do that over and over again? So that's... The problem with most businesses is you take the business owner out and then you got nothing. So let me just give you a little bit about how I transitioned in the business. Just a quick background on myself. You know, obviously, I told you I played in the NFL. I opened a restaurant. The restaurant was a disaster. It was a disaster for me. You know, at the time I was 23 years old and I said, oh, I'm going to open this restaurant. I'm going to open this restaurant. I got my money. I had saved 120000 after taxes. My first year playing in the NFL, it's a lot of money, making $250,000 a year as a 23-year-old kid. Anybody have kids in, the, in their early 20s, right? If you gave them $250,000 and they don't have any knowledge or any systems, do you think that money's going to stay long? No. Okay, so I said, all right, I'm going to open a business. And I did. Best and worst thing that I ever did. Worst thing because I almost lost my fortune that I had saved that first year. But the best thing because even though that was a failure, I was taught what not to do. And I didn't look at it as a failure. You will fail. Everyone put your hand on your heart right now and say, I will fail. Ah, oh, come on. Here we go. Put your hand on your heart. I know this is cheesy. I will fail. And I'll accept it. You want to know why? Because every successful entrepreneur out there has failed. Many times. And I see a lot of people, and I'm not saying anything negative, because this, you know, I, occasionally in the very beginning, uh, I got involved in projects and I'd listen to the seller's story and I'd hear what the seller's telling and I'd raise my offer. Folks, don't put yourself in a bad position because you start to take the seller's problems and make them your own problems. This is a business. I, I wasn't a great listener when I started. A lot of times I go into these appointments and I just talk and talk and talk. The whole Ernesto crisis was a great example of that. I just talked and talked and talked. At the end of the day, Ernesto's looking at me like, is he hiring me, firing me? What the hell is this guy talking about, right? Well, you need to listen, and the more you listen, you get, will get all the clues from the seller about how you should negotiate that deal. In the comments below, let me know which tip you like the best. Also, who do you think is the greatest investor of all time? My name is Mike Del Pri, and thank you for watching.